Most people use ChatGPT on an everyday basis, but for one reason or another, they feel as though they're not getting ahead. They feel as though they're not seeing the results that they're supposed to see by having this super intelligent, sophisticated friend. And the truth is there are a couple of different reasons why you're experiencing this. Most people's intuition tells them that somehow they're using ChatGPT wrong, but I think it's deeper than that. It's not so much that you don't know how to to use ChatGPT, and I think it's more so that you drift while you use ChatGPT. You start a chat, you ask a question, you get a decent answer, and then guess what happens? Nothing, because you don't do anything with the information for the most part, and that's not me calling you out, that's just me stating a fact. That's something that I had to notice in my own behavior, and I'm pretty sure that it's something that's happening with millions of people where we're gathering information, but it's not creating more action. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get ChatGPT, number one, to recognize these behavioral patterns when you're exhibiting them, number two, how to get ChatGPT to call you out on it, and number three, how to take action on it swiftly. Because the sooner you start taking action on the things that you're learning or the research that you're doing with ChatGPT, the sooner you can start seeing the results in your life. So by the very nature of what ChatGPT is, it trains you to drift if you don't know this already, because it doesn't know anything about you unless you give it the details about your personal life. And sadly, most people just use ChatGPT like Google. They ask it random questions, so they get random responses. And they think that ChatGPT is always going to give them the right answer. But the truth is, ChatGPT can make errors, but even besides it making errors, it's not going to always try to get the best answer because getting the best answer requires a lot of resources because there's a lot of context, there's a lot of things that need to be considered, and ChatGPT is not going to do that. It's going to give you a good enough answer. And so unless ChatGPT has some personal understanding of you, your context, and the question you're asking, and you're asking your questions in a way that keep you from ending up in the confirmation bias trap, you're going to always stay stuck. It's almost like if you hire a genius assistant, but you give them amnesia every time you walk in the room. They're super smart, they're helpful, they're one of your greatest assets, but they have to constantly get to know who you are. And so if you're using ChatGPT like Google and you're just asking it very basic questions, then that's a very low content. So you're going to get a very low output because as I mentioned already, in order for ChatGPT to even give you the best answer, it needs to draw on the resources that are necessary for that. And in real life, if you want a best possible solution to a situation, because sometimes in life, there isn't a right or wrong situation, it's just good and then better. And so you want the best solution. Well, you need to look at all of the alternatives. Something that I found that's very helpful is to give ChatGPT a full blown narrative. Give it a story and then ask it the question. And in my experience, the responses are so richer. But probably one of the most deadly ways that ChatGPT actually holds us back is that we, we, we trust it too much. So we ask it a question, ChatGPT gives us a response. We copy paste it, we go with it. We don't test it, we don't challenge it. And I'm telling you now that challenging ChatGPT is actually one of the best ways to to get it to level up its performance. But now let's talk about how to create a master instruction that will guide your ChatGPT experience and keep you from falling into these traps or any of your own personal weaknesses. So what we need to do to optimize our ChatGPT account and our experience is to give it a global instruction that's going to manage everything for us. And so here are a couple of steps I want you to walk through very quickly to help you put together that global instruction that's going to keep you on track when you're using ChatGPT and also help you get the most helpful responses. So here we are inside of my ChatGPT optimization system and it covers everything from your purpose for using ChatGPT, the patterns, onboarding projects, voices, images, or code it, everything. But what we want to talk about is your purpose primarily. And so the first thing you want to decide is what is my purpose for using my ChatGPT account? Is it to help me grow my business? Is it to help 
help me in my personal life? Am I using it for general information? Am I using it to help me study for college? What is the primary purpose of my ChatGPT account? After you've decided what your purpose is for your account, the next thing you wanna do is define success in behavioral terms. So go beyond the outcomes and start asking yourself, what should your particular progress look like? This is going to be different for everybody, but you just want to kind of get a picture of what does progress look like? The next thing you want to do is set guardrails. What should ChatGPT stop you from doing? Now, one way to actually do this is to run a prompt where you simply ask ChatGPT, what are my top five weaknesses that you see me exhibit across the most recent conversations that we've had together or something very similar to that. And you also want to put this small appendage at the end of that prompt. And you want to say, be brutally honest with me, even if it means you hurt my feelings and embarrass me. And, it will do exactly that. It's going to call you out. Now, once it calls you out, you just want to take that information and set it to the side because you're basically taking these different elements we're gathering and they're going to be ingredients that you put in the pot together. That's the next step. You want to take your primary goal for your account, your success defined in behavioral terms. You want to take your guardrails, which will basically be your five weaknesses. These are the things that I don't want to do anymore. You're going to take all of those things together, your primary goal, your weaknesses, everything we just discussed, and you would run a prompt very similar to the one that I have here. And I just told ChatGPT that you are my blank. This is your chief role. And your job is to help me achieve this primary purpose and scale beyond it. And these are your standing orders. And so basically the standing orders are actions that I wanted to take. And these are the actions that I use to make ChatGPT more assertive. And then the triggering conditions are my weaknesses, my five weaknesses. But here is the secret sauce right here. It's the accountability protocol. So if you detect any of the above triggers, respond with this three part format, no comfort, no delay. Number one, call out, name the behavior, Tell me what I'm doing. Number two, assign one clear revenue tie task due in 24 to 48 hours. Number three, consequence, explain the cost of further delay in blunt terms. Until the task is completed and results are shown, refuse to entertain any new ideas or strategy. Once completed, respond with one sentence result, one sentence lesson, one next leverage move plus deadline, etc. So just before I press record on this video, I intended on actually sharing this dashboard that I created. And I was thinking, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and record videos and embed them with each of the individual modules so that each chapter not only had the written content, but that it would have video content. And then I'm going to add links to Google Docs and all of that. This is going to be a full flesh dashboard that I created with AI that a person can get and download and can get updates as long as I update it, which is going to be frequently for a very long time to come. And it's only going to get bigger and better. But I was having this conversation with one of my profiles that I created, a personality, Elara Vance, my copywriter. And basically I said, hey, you know what? Before I do this video, I'm thinking about holding off on the video and embedding the videos to each of the individual modules. And so basically I said I could try to make this dashboard at least that much more valuable, but I could be falling into the trap of hesitation, not taking action. Let me know what you think about this. And this is what it said, call out action consequence. Call out, this is classic paralysis disguised as strategy. You're postponing shipping a working asset under the illusion of increasing its value. But the dashboard is already valuable. You said it yourself. Comprehensive, for beginners, no login, one file, forever access. What you're flirting with now is scope creep. And so it gave me an action and it gave me a consequence. And so it called me out and now I'm recording this video instead of postponing it. And once you run your own prompt similar to this, of course, you might have to change your standing orders. Mine's is focused on business and yours might be focused on wellness or relationships. But once you run a prompt like this, it's going to give you an output that basically give you a master prompt just like this. And all you're going to do is go to your chat GPT account, click on your profile, click on personalize, 
And right here at the top where it asks you what trait should ChatGPT have, you're going to paste that master prompt with the call out protocol. Now, whenever you start exhibiting those five weaknesses, ChatGPT is going to call you out it's going to give you a course of action to take and it's going to remind you the cost of not taking action. And so now you have a version of ChatGPT that knows your weaknesses. And if you want, you can even include your strengths so that it knows what you're good at as well. And it's inside of the global memory. And that conversation was inside of a project. So projects can still read the global memory even though they have their own instructions as well. So the possibilities of you using global instructions and project slash profile instructions to really tailor your experience with ChatGPT is limitless. And none of us has any excuse for not taking a few moments to tell ChatGPT how to call us out because we all need accountability. And I think that a major problem is many of us thinking that we're able to use ChatGPT and not become sidetracked. Because if you're anything like me, once you start experimenting and you get into your creative flow, the ideas begin flowing and it's very difficult to stay on one idea and finish it until the end. And it's very tempting to start opening several different tabs and working on several different things simultaneously. If you want to use a master instruction like this, that's going to get chat GPT to call you out when you're out of line, then just go to the patterns tab right here in the file. If you get it, I'll put a link in the description where you can get it if you want it. And then there's going to be a prompt right here. Here are my five biggest weaknesses that often interfere with my goals. There's the list. When you detect signs of these behaviors in my prompts or messages, respond using a three part formula, call it out, explain how it slows me down three redirect me to the next best step be firm but supportive and so you have everything you need here to optimize your chat gpt account so that you start taking action and you stop falling into the trap where chat gpt is holding you back but if you got value out of the video make sure you hit the like button subscribe to the channel and as always take care have a good day and i'll see you in the next video where i show you how to use claude chat gpt and Google Gemini to build a professional looking website in less than 20 minutes. I'll see you in that next video.